So remember that time that uh, the people spoke against God and against Moses, so he set fiery serpents on them to, to kill them until he set one of them made of bronze on a pole, and if anybody looked at it, they would live. It makes no kind of sense until you realize what is happening. The people are not complaining to God. They're not even petitioning God to, to make things better. They are speaking against him. That's different. They're not asking, hey, that promise you made us, where is it? This is not a fear, love, and trust kind of uh, complaint because we actually think that you are better than this. And so we, we really ought to have better than this. There is power behind their words when they speak against God because, well, words have power. It is unbelief put to work. Sticks and stones might break your bones, but words have even more power. It's why we have to make up nursery rhymes that aren't true and tell our kids to feel better when their feelings get hurt. Words have power. God shows us just how much. He holds up a mirror to let us see just how much damage words can do. Fiery serpents that use their mouths to kill. You can see words for what they are. You see the damage that they can do when they are made to be sin. If you've ever been the one that people talk about, you know this is, this is actually what sin looks like. Fiery serpents biting you, using your mouth for, for death. This is what it does. God acted in this way because, well, sin breaks stuff. And here the people can finally see it, just how much damage that sinful mouths can work. And so they beg God, take it away, be a God of mercy. But he, he doesn't. He, he can't just make it better. It, it would look actually worse than if he sent fiery serpents. If he just left them to speak against him and leave him, well, that would be to leave them to be punished for their own sins. Not just in a fiery death, but in a, an eternal condemnation. So instead, ours is a God who answers the prayers of our hurting people, not because they are worthy, not because they have just sort of hurt enough to feel reprimanded and punished, but because he loves them. He shows them what kind of God he is then. He sets the very thing that is killing them on a pole to make it a source of life. He refuses to condemn you who he loves, even in the midst of you killing yourself and the people around you by your sins. He can't just get rid of your sin, so he becomes it. He who knew no sin became sin for us, hung upon a cross for us so that gazing upon him, we would live. He sent his son into the world to bear your sin, your evil, your pain, even to become your death, to be lifted up upon a cross, to bleed and die for sinners because we can't just simply undo the sin as much as we wish that we could because you can look around and see stuff is still broken. And so instead of just ignoring it, God assumes it, takes it all upon himself and then grants you a source of life so that even in the midst of death, you would have life. Christianity is not a getting better religion. It is a sinners must see Jesus religion because here, here the dying find life. Here, even the death find resurrection because Jesus who died will rise again. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts. We have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university with values.